Hey everyone, my name is Pratik Nayak and I've been a retoucher for over 10 years. And the thing that I love about black and whites is the ability for it to truly show emotion. When I'd visit galleries, I would always notice the black and white images or in old photo books. And I was truly incredibly amazed by the beauty of it, the way the grain was interesting, the conversion, the tonal values. And it was something that I was so envious of because I could never truly grasp that and apply it to my images. So I said, you know what, let's make a tool that allows you to truly explore the infinite tonal possibilities of an image. And so Infinite Black and White was born. And as you can see here from the images in the background, all created by our incredible photographer user base, you can see that it applies to a variety of images across a spectrum of different genres as well. And that's what I love about it. everything from landscapes to portraits to beauty. You can see the tonal values are all very, very different. And it shows me that no matter what you shoot, you're able to make something beautiful using the panel. So let me give you a, an example. We have an image here by uh, Jay Mayhew, who's a phenomenal portrait photographer, a true all-star, and has really grown her career ever since um, I've known her and ever since this photograph. Um, and the way this works is that if you haven't seen the way Infinite Color Panel works, check out our website at infinitecolorpanel.com and you can see how the Infinite Color Panel works. It works very similarly if you'd like some uh, a refresher or a analogous example. But very simply put, very simply, when you hit the Create button, right, what happens is you end up getting this folder called Infinite Black and White. And within the folder, you get these four adjustment layers, just like this. Well, the magic is also not just in the adjustment layers, but how they're stacked, the algorithms that are used to create it, and the settings we use to analyze um, what uh, would be a good output to create a good black and white image. What I mean by that is we structurally um, stacked this layer stack so that we have the channel mixer first, then we have selective color next, and then the black and white, and then a curve. So the channel mixer, um, just very, very vaguely, is a combination of red, green, and blue, which are the primary uh, channels of an image that make up an image. And when you modify the channels and keep it to 100%, what happens is if I turn all the other ones off here, you'll see channel mixtures, the only one on. And when I hit create again, you'll notice that, let me bring the intensity up for a second. You'll notice that the image changes colors in a way that isn't really necessarily pleasing for a color image, but the magic happens when I turn this black and white on and I randomize child mixer, you can see that there's tonal variations happening. So in a black and white setting, if I shuffle this, you can see me shuffling while using the shuffle icon, you can see there's tonal variations happening very subtly, but enough where there's a difference. So that's great and all. And you can see that every time I hit shuffle, the total constant stays 100. Typically what happens is when you modify these channels, you end up actually pushing things too much and everything gets brighter or darker. So things have to stay 100. When I hit shuffle, it will shuffle all the values, but 100 will stay constant. And it shuffles them through red, green, and blue at the same time. So it's coming up with something really interesting. But that's just the beginning. When I enable selective color, black and white as well, and then I hit create, what you'll notice is that the tonality starts building in a way that is very interesting and very natural. You can see that even the highlight to shadow transitions is very natural, but still every single one is completely different. Every single transition is different. Every time I hit create, it comes up with something very unique every single time. And lastly, I can enable curves on top for an additional variable impact that so takes it to another level entirely. That's my absolute favorite. We can take a look at this an example um, with another image. For example, I come over here and Stormy Sloan, who is a phenomenal boudoir photographer, has this image um, as well that we're going to use for it. And I hit create. You'll notice that, let's zoom into the face here. You'll see that the difference for every single application is unique. The shadows change to the midtones and the midtones to the highlights and so forth. It's very interesting and you can come up with something very unique to actually get what you want. Now there are a couple of the settings I want to show you. 
When I right click over here, you'll see that you're able to change the name of the group. You can change the color of the group. So if I change it to red and I call this black and white, and I can keep my opacity 100. I can add a mask to the group. I can make sure the group will always stay on top of your layer stack. And now when I hit back, I'm going to go ahead and delete this for a second and hit create. You'll notice that the color itself changes, the name changes, and the mask is added. And this is great because you can easily help you identify and organize what you're doing. Also, we have the ability to add your um, black and white adjustments as a saved layers stack. So you don't even need to um, put this into libraries or you figure out how to make it to an action. If you like what you've created, if you like this conversion, you can save it. Now, this will only be applicable and available the tool section over here where you can save your user looks. This will only be there in Photoshop 2021 and above. Basically, anywhere where you have this plugins menu, then you're good to go. If you have something like 2020 or less, you can still use infinite black and white, but you just won't have this functionality um, because this is uh, specifically created with tools that are available in 2021 and above. But basically how it works is that you can right click and uh, actually not right click. You can expand the folder, make sure the folder name is selected here and then hold shift and then select the first layer within the folder. Then come over to the plus sign, hit plus, and it'll say right click for setup. So once the button is there, you're gonna right click, you're gonna call this whatever you want, you're gonna maybe um, BW -B <laughs> Red Series. I think that's a cool name. And I'll say, okay, that worked. Thank you very much. And there it is, BW Red Series. I could delete the layers here, click on it again, and there we go. It's all there for you. Even cooler is that we have the ability to backup and import. So if you want to send this to someone, you click on the uh, wheel here and then say backup. And then it'll allow you to backup. And then you send that file to someone and they can just click on import and it'll import all your color grades and black and white grades and all that stuff. And if you don't want to save locally, you can use our infinite cloud. You click on open infinite cloud, click on plus, and then I'll just go and edit this name. I'll just say, uh, black and white and hit save. And then it will save everything that is included in your uh, tool section as well. So you don't have to physically have a physical copy of it. It's a good like secondary backup as well. Finally, we have the tool section over here at the bottom. And this bottom part's cool because there's this option called regions, the bottom left. And what regions does is if you click on shadows, you can increase or decrease the shadows over here. And what it's doing is it's adding this curve and it's making sure that it only applies to the shadow regions. And so if you don't see this area here, just go to window and properties, and it's going to pop up with this window here. And once you click on the shadow curve, not the mask, but the curve itself, you will then see this option to adjust the brightness of the shadows. And the same thing goes for midtones. I can do that too. And I can do the highlights as well. But you typically want to go ahead and bring the highlights down from this point on the right, like that. And same thing with the shadows. Uh, you want to go to the left over here and increase this point as well if you want to fade that. So you can have a really interesting, super customized black and white conversion. And so if I bring that together, you can see what a difference we've made once the base is established. So there you go. We can see the before and after here. Very, very interesting. Alternatively, they have other options too. Like we have a grain option, which is digital noise. And digital noise and grain, I like call them the same thing, even though they're not. But you know what I mean. You have the ability to increase the noise as well. And I always think that, you know, having that greediness in a black and white image looks really interesting. And also we've ensured that the black and white itself or the uh, the grain itself or digital noise, whatever you want to call it, becomes more progressive into the shadows. So you have more of that being applied into the shadows than the highlights. So if you look in the back, you see the bright area here. There's less of that 
noisiness compared to the shadows. Because when you have film, you'll notice the same thing is that noise or grain is a lot less apparent in the highlights and the shadows, and we want to replicate that realistic effect. We also have ability to add contrast. Should you want more contrast, you can keep on clicking it. It'll just keep adding more contrast. Or you can click on the bottom right, which is fade. And fade will allow you to fade out the shadows even more. With those options, I, I truly hope gives you a good idea of how all this works. Please check out our website at infinitecolorpanel.com and you can see exactly all the videos and uh, a bunch of other things on how to use our, our tools. So I'm excited to see what you do with it. And we also feature a lot of photographers and creatives. So check out our Instagram and our Facebook groups as well and join our community. And we can't wait to see you and hopefully feature your work.